episode 397 of Global from Asia. I'm in Tokyo <laughs> and super busy. I think some of you remember the podcast with Gary Huang. He put together this amazing event here. I made a video blog as well. I can't go to a fish market for lunch and just want to record our little intro for today's show. Let's tune in. Welcome to the Global from Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now, your host, Michael Michelini. All right, this week's show, it's been like a long series of just me on the show. I, I have some great guests lined up, but I've been doing a lot of speaking. And this session, we're going to be talking about external traffic for your Amazon. It was a session I spoke at at the Amazon Meetup official Amazon Global Selling Team dinner event in Chiang Mai in March. And it was a pretty good session. It was actually in English and in Thai. And Snook is great. She helped interpret, but we're going to put English only on today's on today's show. But we are working more on Thai, Japanese, and other international markets here. A lot of exciting things happening. But let's tune into the show. And then after, I'll show you around the fish market really quick. Maybe you can meet some of the other people that came to this conference. Are you looking for a cross-border logistics company from Asia to the East and the West? Then look no further. Cross Better Logistics is a solution for you. From ocean shipping to air freight, from factory to 3PL warehouse, Amazon FBA, and Walmart, Cross Better Logistics is an experienced service provider for e-commerce sellers and B2B traders on TPS Trade. As a GFA Partner Level sponsor, let them know we sent you and they'll take care of you. Check them out at www.crossbetter.com today. I feel like this is like medium, medium level. I, I noticed some new sellers, this is more middle level. It's about external traffic to your Amazon store. So Evergreen, it's one of my favorite things. I know interpreting might be hard, but I've tried to build Evergreen businesses. So Evergreen means it's long lasting. Like these are Evergreen trees you know, in a forest. They last longer than humans. They last a long time. I try to build content businesses, inbound traffic businesses, brands that last a long time. Who knows him? He's, he's your boss. If you're a seller on Amazon, he's your boss. <clears throat> but I like his quote, you know, Jeff Bezos, C, no longer CEO, but the founder of Amazon, says your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And I say that's not just about your product, but it's about you as a person, it's about your service, the way you treat people, the way you're, if you're a service provider, the way you treat your customers, if you're a product seller, the way you present your, your product to your customer. So the real test is if I leave right now, what, is, what will you say about, about me? What will you say about the product that I deliver you? You know, it's like this is one of our case studies. Actually, I brought the book. I'm going to try to find some ways to give away a book at the end. I'm thinking some questions. I'll ask some questions and we'll give away two for free. But this book I wrote about one of my, ex one of my time selling on Amazon was the Sisitano, the coffee pot. So we built this brand and we sold this brand in 2018, I think, or before COVID. And now this is, that's Luciano. Luciano, say hi. Want to say, say hello? That's Luciano there. And this is our newest brand, one of our brands, I, I, Excalibur Brothers. So I've done some meetups here and I've shown people. So we're doing gifts for men right now. And I'll share this in my presentation. So I like to kind of use an example brand when I share. It's kind of hard to pass it around, but if you want to look at this, you can look. Okay, so that was kind of like intro and warm up. <clears throat> so we're gonna cover a lot today. I keep looking at about four minutes in, so we still got good time. The mindset, funnels, I was talking earlier, I, I talked to some of you, we're gonna talk about funnels. Attribution, affiliates, paid ads, and examples, and Q&A. So it's a lot, it's a lot. This is actually a three hour 
workshop I do, and I'm trying to compact it in 45 minutes. <clears throat> but I've done this as a three hour workshop before. So mindset. So what is, what is content? Does somebody want to try to answer this? Does, what is content? Video, audio, image, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's true, it, content is audio, video, text. I guess a little bit of a trick question, but I call it food. You just ate content. No, you didn't eat content, but you're eating food for a community. It's people, your, your customers, your community, people that will buy your product or your service. You are feeding your audience content so that they know you and buy from you. And content could be your listing, right? Your product photo, your video, your description, but also it could be blogs, social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook ad. You are feeding content to your audience. John, John and I were talking earlier, we're working on a Kickstarter and he's working really hard on creating more content. Content is, the, is king. Content is what builds a brand. Content is what you need to constantly feed your audience, your customer, your community. So this is like a mindset thing. So if you don't have food, you don't have a brand. So a lot of people think a brand is putting a logo on a product, like a private label brand is I took this flask, right, that you're maybe passing around, and you put your logo on it. A lot of factories especially think that's a brand. I guess you can technically call it a brand, but if you don't have content and you're not feeding your audience and you're not building awareness and relationship with your community, you're not, in my opinion, a real brand. This is a lot of text. I tried to make something fancy, but basically the point here is you can look at it. In the past, in the past factories and product companies didn't do content. They didn't really do content. They would outsource to a media company, an advertising company, right? There was a separation <coughs> of product and manufacturing and media and marketing, right? But we're moving now to this point now where we're, we're creating our own social media accounts, we're, we're paying for content, we're finding in KOL, influencer, you know, we're, we're, we are in the middle now. But I think the future brands will be their own media companies. They're, the merger of e-commerce and media will be together. You have to do your own media. You have to be a media company. Gary V, do people know, in Thailand, do people know Gary V? I say yes, well I think the foreigners know, but I got to meet him in Hong Kong, I'm kind of a fan. But he says that we are all media companies, right? Everybody is a media company now, right? We have social media, we have websites, we have channels to communicate directly with our audience. And you know, he had Wine Library TV was one of his first businesses where he had like a YouTube channel and he would, he would, you know, sell his wine on his YouTube channel, right? So he was creating content to sell his own wine, right? So we are all media and he says that there's a big merger between e-commerce and brands and media companies. Do you accept this? That's the mindset, right? So do you... Maybe you don't agree with me. Maybe you think you don't need to do content. You can just, <clears throat> you know, pay other people, other companies. But if you believe in this, there's so many things you got to do. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, right? We all, there's so much work. You have to create the content, maybe find influencers, do paid ads, do community, do affiliates, and driving traffic, tr measuring, and, and call to action, CTA. You, you have a lot of work to do this. It's not an easy job. So now we're in second part and we're kind of on time. I would do welcome questions. I know people seem quieter or shy. So we need to think of a funnel. Do people know what a funnel is? No? I think there's some yeses, but we'll get to it, we'll get to it. So I, I kind of call this a funnel in a way. And this is our, our storefront. So you look here, this is amazon.com slash Excalibur Brothers. If you go to amazon.com, I'm sorry, Chinese now, slash Excalibur Brothers, you will see this page. This is our storefront homepage. 
I'm driving traffic here. I'm not driving traffic here. Okay, this is my listing. Right? So I'm driving traffic to my storefront, which then drives to actually a full dedicated product page for the flask, right? And then to my listing. That's my Amazon funnel, which we'll be talking about today. I, it looks scary, but it's basically saying is you're sending traffic from, I call it affiliate or any kind of site, right? Web, your website, your Facebook, your whichever, to your Amazon. It says listings, but you're trying to drive traffic to a website, to the listing. Another way is, instead of doing it directly to the listing, because I know some people like Eric have had listing problems, if you send it to your storefront, you have a little bit more control of the experience your visitor has, because it's more your IP, your brand. So I send traffic from these channels to the storefront rather than to the listing. Again, I'm driving from storefront to listing. So this is kind of one of my core things I'm talking about today. So I, I know some people said they don't have a storefront. I would. Even more basic is you need a brand. <laughs> I, I don't have that in my content today. That's why I said I'm kind of medium level, maybe even advanced, but I feel like this is medium level. You, I strongly recommend you need to get brand registry. To do this, you need brand registry. But I, I do brands. I don't, I, don't, I don't just sell generic. I only do brand. I think that's what Amazon wants. You could ask them yourself. But I'm driving from my store to my listing. And I really believe that increases my rank and my traffic, and we'll, we'll talk about that. It's an external traffic funnel, so we're going to go into the external part, but that's the internal part. And somebody, I was talking to Tables, and he, he says he, does, he wants to know external traffic, but also internal traffic. And I would say that's internal traffic. Your storefront to your listing. Right? It's, it's, it's like double work, because you've got to make another page, you know. But, uh, so here is more funnel. So this is the top, right? Top of funnel. The people, I'm trying to gauge how much people know. Top of funnel, middle, bottom. So this is where they learn about you, they trust you, they buy from you. Learn, know you, trust you, buy. So maybe blog, TikTok, maybe Amazon Post, even Amazon Post is internal. This is people just see your photos, see your product, learn about you. And then this is where I send them to the store. Storefront, storefront, storefront. Not to listing. I want them to only see my product. I don't want them to see my competitor product. Your listing is not yours, it's Amazon's. They put your competitor all over your listing. You don't want them to see your competitor. So your store is only your product. They also cannot easily take off your storefront page. Your listing, you could maybe have a problem on your listing. So you want to control the storefront. Once they're ready to buy, it's just listing to buy. So they already want your product, not your competitor. They're not looking at your competitor's ad. They already want to buy, they buy. This is the funnel. At your storefront, do you link only to your Amazon listing or do you like present your expertise by showing I have a blog or you know, that sort of because that the disadvantage, the advantage might be that you're showing your, your authority that uh, I've got all this information and this is why this product is good for you. On the other hand, it takes him away from Amazon. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So he's asking about do you put other information or links besides the product? Actually, Snook is in one of these photos. On another brand, the Asato one, she, we did a photo shoot and I'm in it, she's in it, there's a few people in it on the Asato brand. <clears throat> so we have about page, we have other like 
authority building, but on the actual product page itself, we just want to send them to the product. But it's, it's almost like you're building an Amazon storefront, it's like an Amazon website. It's like an eBay store. Back in eBay days, I would build the eBay store, and then I would send the store to my li listing. So you have more control of design, more control of the traffic. It's also Amazon posts are live there. It's where you're driving, you're driving your traffic. So it's not just external traffic, it's internal traffic off Amazon. Because there's more ways internal customers on Amazon can find your content. So I put a lot, a lot of content in my storefront. So this is some, some data you'll get also. By having a storefront, you get more data. Also, as a brand registry, you get more data. So you want to you want to use these tools, okay? So again, we don't. I wish we had more time. I'm trying. I'm trying to give as much as I possibly can. But you'll see some some data sources like organic, Amazon, other sources. This this is a this is a tag. So we call it our website static. We build them on HTML, CSS, kind of technical. But we just say static. So we're driving from our website. You know, we're seeing this sponsored brands, organic traffic. You're trying to see where this traffic and how many sales. So it's giving you data. This is a recent screenshot, but you're collecting this data from Amazon to, to your storefront to understand where your customers are coming from, how many are buying. You get this by using the storefront, not from the listing. This is from the storefront. Amazon attribution, do people, anybody use Amazon attribution? One, it's a little bit, there's not many people that use it. Amazon attribution, a good, good, good job. It is a little bit more advanced, but it's another tool. So you can track your, even for listings, not even storefront, but you can create like short URLs that you can use on Facebook or TikTok or storefront to see where your traffic is coming from. So it's another way, it's another tool to measure your funnel. I wanted a whiteboard, I don't think they had one, but you're just trying to measure and track where your traffic is coming from. And storefront attribution are ways to understand your funnel, to map your funnel. And then what we do, this is actually another brand, Akatai, has more stuff. This is actually made in, what's that city? Uh, the the uh, pond, the wall. Payao, we make these in Payao. This is a jewelry made in Payao. So we make this very, it looks complicated, but it's just a tracking, right? So this is a, the, the different kinds of jewelry of our listings, variations, and the title, and the Amazon link. So this is like, we're just tracking Facebook, Instagram, TikTok traffic to try to understand what traffic is getting clicks and sales using attribution. So like this is this is this is from Amazon, right? This is Amazon, and then the next one, we just put it into Google Sheet or Excel, so we can track it, so we can have a list instead of using Amazon. So that's done with funnel. We're gonna go through some traffic sources, and again, each of these could be like a, a whole course. So we're gonna go through one. This is pretty straightforward. I want to make something that you can learn and do maybe today or tomorrow, and affiliates. So one way to do affiliates is to go to your advertising promotions, next, and then create a coupon where you create a percent off. So see, you're creating a 15% coupon. You do not show it on your listing. This is showing on the listing. We, 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 we don't show on the listing. I know it might be complicated. I, I'm gonna, you don't show the listing. And then next. Then you, you can put this like Eric does a lot of blogs, right? Or his own website. You can give your own coupon code on your own website or to an affiliate that gives them a 15% off code on your listing. And now you can track how many sales they're giving you. So I, I made that, I know it's a, maybe it's overwhelming, it's just basically create a coupon code and that code you don't show anyone else except that one person or affiliate. And they can say, oh, this flask is the best flask. 
use my coupon code ERIC123 and you will get 15% off on Amazon. So you will know as a seller, ERIC123. So I know ERIC brought me a customer because I saw his coupon was being used. I can use a report from my sales. I can see Eric on his blog, or maybe he's going around here and asking people to buy my, my flask, and he's bringing me customer, and I can know that. Or I can give Shane one. Shane can go around and sell flasks and give a special coupon, and I can run the report. And I say, good job, Shane, you got me 15 customers. I'll give you a, some, I want some peanut butter, actually. He sells peanut butter, I buy some peanut butter. But you understand, you're trying to track. To do marketing, you need to know what is driving clicks and the funnel, right? You're knowing what's driving you business. So this is, I, I try to make, I was thinking about it, I'm like, what's a specific way I can help today for you to learn what to do right now? So if you want this, give your TikTok person, give somebody a coupon, a specific coupon. And then this is pretty easy, right? You create a coupon and give it to them. And then you can track their sales. So I wanted to do that today to make sure you had at least one very specific thing. And this is one specific thing. Okay. So that was like a, an affiliate marketing way, right? So you could give bloggers, reviewers, TikTokers a coupon. And they can say, you can make it anything. You can say like, you know, Snook1288, you know, and they can say it on their video on YouTube or put it in their blog. So that's, a, that's one for like affiliate marketing. This is paid ads. Paid ads, of course, everybody loves paid ads. It's very scalable. And more blocks, more channels. Okay, who has a website for their, their business? Website. About half, more than half? Okay, that's good. Actually, a lot of, I, I, I live in China for over, I guess over 10 years, and a lot of Chinese sellers don't bother with a website. They don't bother. They don't think they need a website. So I'm glad a lot of here have it. And I like to say, landing pages are money. Everybody likes money, right? So landing pages are where you can test. Landing pages are where you can see if somebody will you know, buy or give you their email or you know, do something that you hope that they will do. And this is where you're testing. Next. And again, like we said before, hidden coupon codes. And here you have hidden landing pages. I like to do hidden because I like to know what traffic I can send there. I don't want any traffic to go there. I want only the traffic I want to go there, go there. So I don't put it on my home page. I don't put it on my menu. It's a hidden page. Okay, okay. You don't want people to see. You can make a copy of it, right? You can copy your, copy a page and hide it. So here's, here's an example. Although I, I should have changed this before, but don't. This is not as good as strategies used to be. I don't know if Amazon's watching. <clears throat> Hopefully not. But uh, you know, back in the day, you do like a really, really low discount. So 80% now. This is how we launched our mocha pot. We drove a lot of Facebook ads to a landing page, hidden landing page, with a huge discount, right? Mocha pot, you know? Everyone in Thailand likes coffee, right? Only $7, normally $35, get the coupon. You know, limited time, there's a countdown timer, you know? So this is, this is, this is like a, a paid advertising landing page strategy, where you're driving Facebook ads, other paid traffic, Maybe even free traffic, or maybe email traffic, right? Affiliate traffic. But you're making multiple pages, right? You just want to have this, this is not public, this is not on your homepage. Boosting ads, right? So you have a landing page, a paid offer, exclusive offer, coupon code, right? And now you gotta send traffic there. I can't teach you Facebook ads in 10 minutes, but next slide. This is like an ad we had, okay? So this is a Facebook ad attention you know 
do you want this special offer? We actually put a video, you know, and then we drive it to a landing page. And you could use Amazon attributions, and you could even do it in Amazon storefronts now, but we would send it to an external landing page with a countdown timer, 24 hours, cookie, you know. But basically, you're, you're sending paid traffic with an exclusive offer, you know, one time chance, buy this now, super good price, send to Amazon, get coupon, get email, get pixel. And I mean, you could copy this or take a photo of this, you know, it's like promotion, 20% off, comment if you want one, comment friend, you're trying to get engagements, you're trying to drive traffic, you're trying to get conversion, right? And you're testing this versus other landing pages, right? Your multiple landing pages, campaigns, testing. And this is Facebook, right? But really, they're all the same. I mean, they look different, but they're all the same. Every paid traffic is somewhat similar. You know, it's funnel. It's all about the funnel, and I wanted to draw it, but it's how many people saw it, how many people clicked it, how many people bought it or opted, you know. So you're just looking which, which one is getting more results, reach, impressions, clicks, sales, how much you spent. So you're, you're testing and testing and testing. This is what marketing is, is, is testing. It's collecting data, it's measuring a funnel. How is the funnel converting? Is it getting, I, people see it, people read it, people click it, people give you money, right? You're just testing this funnel. So with the goal, right, the goal, what are you trying to do? Get, in, get your email, get a pixel, buy the product. These are some call to actions. You know, the landing pages, what are you trying to get them to do? And then of course, the best is to do all three, right? So if you're using a landing page, you, we didn't talk about pixels, but pixels are like tracking and monitoring your ads or, or monitoring your visitors, but you try to get their pixel, right? So you can see how many visitors, how many pro emails, how many sales. So you want to try to find a solution that can try to get everything. Get the pixel, get the email, get the customer. So we started with evergreen. We started with evergreen, and I wanted to end with bamboo because it's more Asia. It's more Asia, right? Evergreen is more America. Bamboo is more Asia. So someone told me a long time ago about the bamboo forest. And they say a bamboo forest, I hope I'm right, you maybe correct me. For a long time, there's, you don't see any bamboo. It's just growing underground. And then suddenly, they just start popping up. They've been growing underground for so long, building this foundation, building the network, building the experience, right? And then suddenly, people see you and like, wow, how did this huge bamboo forest come so suddenly? because they were working so hard underground. And this is what I think building a brand, building an evergreen business, building a long-term business is. This is a lot of hard work that you don't see results maybe right away. You know, I know, especially Amazon, you gotta make it, you gotta ship it, you gotta hope it gets into, you know, that it gets in, you gotta like beg people to buy it, you gotta beg people to review it, right? It's a long time, but it's, it's like a bamboo forest. It's suddenly, it just starts popping up, and then you start to reap the rewards. So that's kind of how I wanted to end today's session. There's time for questions. I don't know if Snook is doing it or Max, but I, I, I hoped. I, I mean, they said, Mike, can you do a session for 45 minutes on external traffic for Amazon? Uh, I'm like, I'll try. So I, I mean, there was a lot there, and I, I hope I hope I, like I said, that, that I've done that almost same slide deck in a three hour session before, so I hope that you got something from this and I, I'm here for questions. Then, then on your experience, if one came to a better result in conversion, like how to listing, uh, and so on. Okay, so I think the question is what's the most, what's the best channel for sales, right? What's the best converting channel? It's a question. Version, what gives the best conversion? 
you know, I know it's gonna be your favorite answer, but it's a, it depends. You know, I think it's a, it depends on your product. It's a, you have to test which channel is best. Like, of course, Instagram is fashion. It's models. It's Luciano sharing his 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 experiences in Bangkok, right? If you're doing fashion, you know, it, it's it's what where is your customer, and where are they? But if you want conversions, conversions would be more for people ready to buy. That might be Google AdWords. Google Ads is where people are searching to buy. Usually Facebook is more like they're friends. They're, they're not ready to buy. They're just branding, awareness. It depends on your product, your price points. Is it, is it a big big customer, big spend, or is it a small thing? But of course, the best one is paid ads. All these platforms want money from us now. Amazon wants PPC, Facebook wants ads, Instagram wants ads. It's very hard to do free. It's very hard to do like organic anymore. So I think the best is to get good at paid advertising on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or Google Ads. But Google Ads might be best for bottom of funnel where they're ready to buy. They're searching buy men's flask, right? And then they convert. So that would probably have a higher conversion. I hope that helps. But that's what marketing, marketing is testing different channels. It's, also, don't do all of these at the same time. Try one, and if it doesn't work, go to the next. If it works, keep going until you get some, maybe have a worker focus on that channel, and then go to another channel. If you do all, it'll be hard. Pick one by one. So she's asking, I hope I'm saying it it's far, far, far? Sending traffic to the storefront page versus a listing page? So I don't trust Amazon too much to send traffic to my listing because they put more and more ads of my competitors on the listing. So I'm gonna send money, if I'm gonna pay Facebook ads to my listing and they say, don't buy my, his product, buy this other guy's product on the listing. They say, yours, they're gonna say, this flask is expensive. Buy hers. Don't buy mine. And I paid Facebook ads to do that. Okay? That's what Amazon does now. So they don't do that yet on your storefront. So you send it to your storefront, it's all your property. You can do into anything you want. And then you can even do coupons. I actually didn't test it yet, but I want to put coupons on my storefront. Because Actually, the flask ranks really, really good. It's really good. And it's very competitive. And this is only, we launched it in like the summer. It's like top, top 10. Because we're driving, I think, it's hard to measure exactly. But I think it's because we send traffic to the storefront to the, to the listing, high conversion, like he says. Amazon wants conversion. They want sales. So I send sales to my listing, not traffic. So I believe a high converting listing. So that's why I, I say the storefront is the middle because maybe they don't want to buy and they leave, but it doesn't hurt my conversion on my listing. I'm trying to convince them on my store and then they only buy mine on my listing. They don't click back, they don't click my competitor, they just buy. I mean, I mean the listing, you're, you're selling them on your storefront page. So while they see your competitors on your listing, they hopefully have been convinced by your storefront to buy yours more than before. It's about, we said, in warming your traffic. It's like you're building the trust and the relationship so that they, they don't want your, it's like a, I'm trying, I always think about it like a boyfriend, girlfriend. I want to be your girlfriend. So I don't want you to see my other boys I don't want you to see other boys, but just me, right? Then later we go outside and you see other boys, but you're already with me. So then you gotta break up with me, but you already were with me. I think about it like this. So you wanna have them be interested in you so that when they see other people, they only remember you.
It's, it's, I actually think a lot about relation. It's about relationships. So you try to convince them to buy only yours. And thank you to our sponsor, our returning sponsor, Mercury.com, online bank. Well, it's a real bank, but you can do it totally online for U.S. Our Blimp program participants are going through this as well. Thank you, Mercury. Travis is great there. He's been on our show. He's been in our events. We're going to have another event where we will have them attending as well. And if you want to get a little bonus for you and us, if you sign up and do some special circumstances, you can go to globalformasia.com slash Mercury. I also have a video tutorial that we use even for the Blimp people. I use the same exact video to learn how to use it. I hope you can check it out totally free why not see you there all right so hope you enjoyed my session share my external traffic for amazon and we're at the fish market i gotta go find them so let's go see if i can find them and then do a little chit chat all right we got gary great job thanks first ever amazon conference in tokyo Woo. thanks thanks for all the support high five, high five. mike high five. appreciate it it was a great event definitely, we definitely. Met a lot of very cool people from all over the world yeah um, yeah, and then right now we're actually at the Tsukiji Fish Market right behind us in, in Tokyo. This is like the oldest and the biggest fish market, and we had some good sushi. Did you have something? Uh, I have some lunch. Okay. I, 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 he, he treated me some birthday shots last yeah. night. It's my first hangover in like a decade. Mike had so. a big night last I miss, night. I Happy miss birthday. This, I missed the market, but yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. My first time in Tokyo, so thanks for, yeah, thanks for your yeah, hospitality. Yeah, it's been great to see you here, man. It's awesome. been awesome. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers. Sayonara. Sayonara. To get more info about running an international business, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.